What's going on guys, Joe Rock here with tutorial number 8.5, which is gonna wrap up our design library uh, project. So this last project, or this last feature that we're putting into this project is going to be the bottom sheet. And Google just implemented this in uh, the support library 23. So uh, I did hold out a little bit to, to implement this so that I can show you guys uh, a little bit of what the bottom sheet is all about, what it's for, and how, and most importantly, how to create it. So if you uh, haven't seen yet, here is the, this is the, uh, oops, go into the action actually, and then this will pull up the intent, which will drag up, and this is just the essence of the bottom sheet. Notice that you can fully hide it, and it does uh, correspond and communicate with this floating action button here that toggles along with it. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and implement that. Uh, we do have the um, fragment, or I'm sorry, the activity still to create. So what we need to do is we need to create an activity which is going to hold this. Um, what we can do is now come into here and we want to create our activity. And let's call it something appropriate like uh, bottom sheet activity and then once that opens up we immediately want to before we forget I know I will uh, we are going to be using we've been using the, uh, the support library throughout so we do want to make sure that we have the app compact activity and we also want to make sure that our theme is going to be brought in as well. This is going to be using our second theme that we have uh, in our styles. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to actually inflate a layout, but we don't have our layout yet. So let's make our layout for this activity and Come into here and let's name it something that we will remember. Uh, let's go ahead and name it activity underscore C underscore bottom sheet. All right, so this is going to be the bulk of what we're working on, but it's really not. too bad and mostly it's going to be uh, doing the heavy work is going to be something that's called uh, the context which is and and then the layout behavior so once again I'll go ahead and I will paste this in save some time and I will step over it so you know I'm you're probably getting used to this by now we're using the coordinator layout okay but notice that our coordinator layout, our app bar layout is not in there because that's not really what we need right now, but we still need a coordinator layout. And the reason why we need a coordinator layout is because of the fact that we're using a layout behavior. So our coordinator layout is uh, gonna be holding all of this other stuff, um, which is gonna be a linear layout, okay? And the linear layout is going to have a few things that it's going to stack. And to give you a representation, it's gonna have a text view, it's going to have a frame layout, a bottom sheet, and this part right here guys is our bottom sheet. Like this is the view that holds our bottom sheet. Notice that it's got a text view that says drag me up, look familiar, right? And then here's the frame layout that holds the text view that centers it. Okay, so that's this, that's this right here. And then there's a floating action button, which of course is this right here. And then this is anchored. Notice that this is anchored at on the bottom sheet. So remember this is, uh, and then this, this is the bottom sheet ID. So that's how we anchor a button onto something. We anchor it by giving it the ID. So we anchor it to the bottom sheet, which is this whole layout right here. And then it says, okay, I know, I know I'm in the bottom sheet and I know I need to be around here. And then we can say anchor gravity to tell it where to go um, in respect to the thing that it's anchored on. 
So in this case, with respect to the uh, to the bottom sheet, which is top right is where it's going to be our end. So the top right is where it's supposed to be. Um, notice that it's not the top right of the screen. It's the top right of whatever it's anchored on, which is the bottom sheet, which is this thing right here. Okay. And the reason why this becomes the bottom sheet is mostly or really all because of the layout behavior, which is bottom sheet behavior. And that's all we really have to do. We just say at string, this is already built in. And we say the layout behavior is a bottom sheet behavior. The coordinator layout says, oh, okay, I know what you are and I know what you want to be then I'm going to put you as a linear layout. Okay, and then uh, after that, all it does is just take this. This is, a, this is, of course, acting as a frame layout again, the fact that we can overlay it, but then anchor it onto the bottom sheet. And that's really all there is to it. It's not too much of, a, uh, of much going on after that. And the coordinator layout is going to take up the rest of the space. And notice that the background is that map mockup which I named map mockup, which is just this whole neck thing. This is just a mockup. It's not functional at all, but it's just supposed to give you some context of what this would be used inside of. Um, and then this takes care of, and then this linear layout is becomes the bottom sheet, all because of this behavior. And that's all we have to do. Everything else is done for us. So uh, very simple, not really too much. It's pretty trivial, and that's exactly how Google wanted to make it. And I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and we'll inflate that. Coming back over here, we'll, we will inflate that using the sent content view. First layout, activity, bottom sheet. And this is going to be a persistent bottom sheet. There are two different kind of bottom sheets. There's a, there's a bottom sheet and there's a persistent bottom sheet. We are making the persistent bottom sheet. And the other one is going to be something like a dialogue. And that's going, it's going to be called like a dialogue. Um, and that's one's supposed to be to where it's not really um, persistent, of course. It's more of just used as a dialogue um, where it's just supposed to happen to come up and to ask you something, a prompt or something. Um, I feel like this one's a little more uh, useful and a little different from the other use cases that you're going to need the other one for. So I wanted to kind of implement this one. And uh, maybe in later videos, if you guys need me to, I will go ahead and implement a the the other bottom sheet but I feel like this one was going to cover more use cases than the other so this is the persistent bottom sheet that I am implementing right here so here I am getting a reference to my bottom sheet which you remember is simply just a linear layout and there is a new class inside of the design library called the bottom sheet behavior and this is why it's really imperative to get the latest SDK because if you may not be able to get this if you don't have uh, 23, point, 23 and or up. So the way you get an instance of a bottom sheet behavior is you do bottom sheet behavior dot and there is a static method called from and you get the behavior from a bottom sheet which is our linear layout. So I can kind of name this maybe sheet just to kind of make it make more sense. Um, and then, then, we can, then we can set stuff that we can already set in the XML, but we could set this in code because, um, you know, this sometimes is a little, maybe a little more clear when you set things in code. Um, it's maybe just a little better for right now, but you can set this stuff in the XML, but I'm going to set it here. So the peak height is where it's going to be at first. So um, if, you, if we come back and we come into here, this is the peak height right here, which is the 300, or I'm sorry, this is the peak height right here. And then this is going to be whether um, the next thing we're going to set is whether it is whether it is hideable or not. So um, this is going to be oops, this is going to be where the peak hike is going to be, which is where it's sort of kind of rest. That's that's sort of what you're setting right there. And then we can give it a another property called hideable, whether or not we can actually hide it. If we set that to false, then it will only go down as far as its peak height, and that's it. And here's the fab, the, the floating action button, that we actually uh, have it anchored to. So what we can do is get a reference to that, do the old, the old click method. And then what we can do is use the behavior to change the state of it 
to collapse. So whenever you uh, do that, it will then be collapsed. Okay, so whenever you click on it, it's actually going to collapse itself. Just like that. So if we give it a higher peak, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Because 300 was what I was using in the example, I believe. Um, what we can see is what happens when we give it a higher peak height. But what we will still need to do is actually get an action for this. So we don't have, remember we set the action up, but we never actually set, up, set it up to where it's going to have a uh, action to it. So uh, let's go back over into our main activity, which is where that resides. Remember, do something here. This is where it's going to finally do something. <laughs> so we can get the context from the actual uh, button that was clicked. And then we want to bring up our new bottom sheet activity. This is how we can do it. And let's change this a little bit right there. And then we can go ahead and we can do start activity and simply pass it in an intent. Okay, so now that we have that wired up, that's gonna actually bring up our new newly uh, created activity. And let's see what we got, guys. Okay, so notice that the peak height is a the peak height is a little bigger and a little taller than what the other one was. Um, so if you want to fluctuate that a little bit, just change that peak height uh, property. And then now it looks like what we can do is it is now working the way we expect it to, like in the example app. And if we hit it there, looks like it's working pretty good. And the one thing uh, more I want to show you guys is something that is important. And you're probably going to find useful. That's a, the the listener for the bottom sheet behavior stuff. So uh, what I mean by that is if you come into here and you do bottom sheet behavior and, uh, and if you come in here and you find where you can set a bottom sheet callback what this does is basically set a listener and this will uh, give you some events that will fire once something happens and that's always nice to have. So what we need to do is we need to do a bottom sheet bottom sheet callback or bottom sheet behavior bottom sheet callback so you know inside of inside of here something we can do and I believe this is the class so bottom sheet oops bottom sheet callback and we probably just need to implement the abstract class Maybe call it my my bottom sheet callback, and then we can simply just give it a new my bottom sheet callback, and then this will give it on slide. So when it's sliding, it'll call this method sliding, and then when it's on state change, which is uh, the state change right here, which notice that the state that's changed or uh, we come into here we can find some enums that's some constants I'm sorry that will uh, give you kind of an idea of what there is there's hidden there's settling which is I think that kind of where it kind of slowly settles in um, expanded which is all the way out dragging which is where it's of course the user's dragging it and collapsed where it is fully collapsed and it's down to its peak height which is what it says right there um, and that's what we had it before so this is where it says on state change once it goes from one state to the other this will be called so this might be some uh, helpful stuff that might be useful to you and I thought I wanted to point it out to you that way you know what's going on and, and when something happens you can trigger another thing to happen and um, that's always useful you know if I can't really think of anything right now at the top of my head but um, I'm sure I will later and I'm sure you will later as well and then uh, be able to do something cool with that well, right, guys, that wraps it up for the design library. I hope I touch bases on a lot of the things that uh, highlights this library. But of course, there's there's still more that can be talked about. If you guys have any suggestions, please leave them below. Um, as future updates come around, I'm sure there's going to be some more features with it. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.